Eurovision has been used by former Soviet states really as a platform for promoting themselves. And that was very evident when the first former Soviet Republic, Estonia, won 10 years ago, 11 years ago now. They launched a nation branding initiative on the back of hosting Eurovision, uh, positively transforming Welcome to Estonia. And that was a multi-million pound campaign, government funded. The government actually stepped in to host Eurovision. They provided the guarantee and the funding because failure to, to stage it would have confirmed that as a poor former Soviet Republic. So that was really when the first showings or, or the first evidence of how important it was for Eastern Europe came about. Um, and ever since, it's be, they are the countries that put in the most effort in terms of promoting their songs, in terms of putting in their biggest stars. So you've got Russia, the one with Dima Bilan, who's huge in Russia, it's huge across the region. And Ukraine as well, they specifically entered Eurovision to improve their international image. They got involved with a PR company who then approached the government to allow them to take part in Eurovision. So it's, it's very, very serious. It's not seen as a, a kind of tacky contest in, in, in the way that we see it in the West. It's seen for some countries the only way they can really promote themselves and get themselves out there. So any kind of platform like the Olympics or European Football Championships and Eurovision is part of because that. Because Western media just aren't taking them seriously or giving them air time and... Yeah. And why is it they, why is it they want that sort of air time? Is it a case of rejection of Russia? Like the Soviet bloc? There's a mixture of that. First of all, yeah, for, so for Estonia it was called the return to Europe. So distancing the country from the Soviet past and then promoting themselves within Europe as a European country. There was an element of that, but also Tragically, it's also making sure that people know that they're there. Right. Most people hadn't really heard of Estonia before they'd won, and so it was really a way of getting you know them on the world map. Really. And for Azerbaijan, it's a very proactive country in terms of pu public diplomacy. They are taking Eurovision very, very seriously. It's the most expensive Eurovision ever. And since they started staging, uh, since they started sorry entering in 2008. They've really been, they, I mean, they came to Eurovision to win. I mean, they've gone, they went all out every single year. And people expect them to win in 2010, and they didn't. But there was a kind of feeling amongst fans and pundits of the contest that they had sort of bought their way How to victory. Do that? Well, and I, I didn't, I don't think they did, but it was just yeah. that idea that we knew they were going to win one day. It was just a matter of time. What did they do which... What can money do beyond I mean, is it about the best song? Well, they could say that, but um, yeah, they promote themselves very much. They get, get professionals from Sweden. Most of their songs haven't actually been as varied. They've been like, performed by Swedes or they've had Swedish songwriters. Um, and they've gone on massive promotional tours, so they get them, their names out there. And they also, they kind of know what works. But um, Azerbaijan's an oil-rich country as well, and they've got the money, and they're kind of burning the money, quite literally. Um, so you've, they're trying to bid for the Olympics as well, and people are closely looking at how they stage Eurovision to see so you know, what's going on here. Really, yeah, seeing, seeing how they can stage a big international event as opposed to needing attention. Because they have quite a lot of attention with the oil. Yeah. But, yeah, but they're trying to, I mean, they've launched this land of fire as well, amazing Azerbaijan. They've got tourist commercials on CNN, all those kind of nation branding initiatives. So they, they've got a dovetailed approach. Now, they, they, are, they are known for their oil, but they're trying to become, I think they're trying to become like a new Dubai. And you walk around the city, you see the bulldozing that's been happening, you see the fountain. I mean, it's a gorgeous place now. But according to some Azeri friends of mine, it wasn't like this five or ten years ago. And whilst it does look lovely now, you have to think at what expense. You know, there are serious political issues here that haven't really been addressed as a state as a stage in Eurovision. Um, so there are some serious questions that need to be answered.